The tides up here can be nefarious, especially neap tides that never bring the creek up above the rock bars. But we weren't going to let that get in the way of getting a line in the water. Boat or no boat, I knew there were fish here waiting for us in the mangrove lined inlets. These guys are well named. I literally just threw a line straight up, hooked it on a mangrove root, popped it off, and he was on. He was like right in the mangroves, right at home. You know, I reckon that's my first mangrove, Jack. Pretty, pretty stoked. He's not a beast, but beautiful little fish. Mangrove Jacks happened to be one of the best table fish in the top end but this little guy wasn't going to feed the two of us. And at this point, we were still relying on the pots for our dinner tonight. Every day, I'm falling for this landscape. Barren and fruitless on the surface, there's a quiet here, a wildness that you can taste in the dirt. But that wildness comes with a price. The road to good fishing is often paved in soft sand. Here at Lorella, we've been cruising around with uh, a little bit lower than highway pressures for most of the tracks, which is fine. But uh, out here at the beach, things are a little bit different. A bit softer here, so MUX is, uh, doesn't have the clearance that this thing has, so I'm gonna basically have to snatch them out. But I'm gonna make sure that I don't get stuck to in the process by letting my pressures down a little bit as well. Four-wheel drive recoveries are rarely straightforward, and it pays to do everything you can to make them work their first time around. Lower tire pressures mean you're getting more flotation on the soft sand. Nine times out of 10, that'll fix the problem. Just let air out of your tires on anything soft and you'll get through, no problem. This was going to need a snatch as well though. I was testing out the new X-Bar from Heyman Reese, which gives me three rated recovery points in the D-Max without even taking the coupling out. So far, I was loving it. This was pretty dug out soft sand though, and about halfway through trying to snatch the MUX, I realized we were going to have to turn this whole recovery around. No recovery ever goes perfectly to plan. So I've actually gotten bogged up trying to pull the MUX out, the D-Max. So I'm gonna get the Max tracks out, put these under the back wheels, and hopefully take some slack back into that uh, snatch strap. With the MUX about half as stuck as I was, it made a lot of sense to pull everything backward down the track. Now that the tables were turned, things finally started to work out, and both of us were soon on the move again. Well, there's more than one way to do a recovery, but at the end of the day, all the vehicles are clear now, so we're gonna go check those pots and hopefully have a well-earned dinner tonight. If you're touring around Australia these days, solar power isn't just a neat toy. It's pretty much a necessity to keep everything charged up on the road. I'm here with Scott from Red Arc. G'day. I've been using these mono blankets all over the top end now, just testing it out on the side of the track. It's been brilliant. And I've used the red amorphous blankets in the past as well. And I wanted to get an idea of the relative merits of these for people touring around Australia. Sure, there's quite a difference in the technology and, and how they're actually built. So monocrystalline, it, it's a standard glass panel, uh, whereas the amorphous is actually has three layers of glass to it, so it's a little bit more efficient. Having the three layers of glass within the amorphous, it can pick up three spectrums of light. So it makes it very efficient that way, particularly first thing in the morning when you've got the angled sun coming in, and on overcast days too, uh, it can pick up the different uh, spectrums of light and, and still produce energy. Whereas the monos you can get more wattage out of pretty similar sized product. Exactly right. They can produce more current uh, in the best and ideal conditions uh, and put more back into your batteries that way. Yeah it's an interesting equation. It's like do you get more current out of less hours or do you get less current over more hours and it really depends on your, your, it your usage. It depends on your type of travel and, and how, you, uh, how you use them. At the end of the day, solar energy is not just a neat trick for us travelers out here. It's a necessity if you want to keep all the toys and everything else charged up on the side of the road. Just remember to use gear that you can trust out here and it won't let you down. Mm -hmm.